Hi, I'm Ruth Murchbear and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. Today I'm in the National Portrait Gallery in London and I'm going to be chatting to Laura Panic. She's a social documentary and portrait photographer and at such a young age has won so many prestigious awards, including one here at the Taylor Wessing Photographic Portrait Prize. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjbear. Laura, thanks so much for, for joining us today and taking time out of your, what I assume is an amazingly busy schedule. You kind of let's fly pretend. around doing, let's pretend. It is, I know it is. I know it's extremely busy. You're shooting everything. I mean, you have so many commissions and then you're up to date with your personal work and then you've got a, a weekly blog and it just seems that you are so productive. You're putting everyone else to shame. All of facade. Is it? Yeah, it's totally. a very good one. It's extremely good. It's total facade. So do you find a balance between your personal work and your commissions? Like, do, is that important to you to maintain like the amount of workload you do is quite equal or do you have a favorite or what? To, what yeah, I think like um, to keep myself sane, I yeah. have to keep my personal work going. Um, and also it kind of, it, your your commissioned work is so, well, my commissioned work is so in, like unpredictable. Right. So I never really know what's going to happen from one day to the next. So like it's kind of like- Like in terms of the jobs that come in? Yeah, yeah, there's no, there's no consistency. Whereas with my personal work I'm kind of in control of that consistency okay. so I can set the dates I can set more yeah. or less the times when I'm going to dedicate my time to that and actually like the majority of my personal work is just research based oh, so okay. I'm spending a hell of a lot of time just behind a computer or meeting yeah. people yeah. or listening to things or watching things so I, I can kind of fit those balances in because I'm predominantly shooting natural light so yeah. I can kind of shoot during the day and so so when you're doing um say your personal work and you're doing a, a hell of a lot of research and stuff like that how do you normally find what it is that you want to shoot I mean is it just through web or is it how, how does that come about? I think like um, um, like everything in photography, it's instinct. Yeah. Um, and then I think it's also from that instinct comes intrigue and curiosity. And if I feel like something's challenging me and yeah. like really challenging me, then I kind of push it further and further. Oh, I see. And the irony is, is that I am the most impatient person. Like I'm That's so bad. Yeah. But like when it comes to personal work, I just have to be tenacious about it. And I yeah. have to kind of find ways around things and kind of problem solve and be patient and that's probably because I'm reliant on other people for my personal work. I need subjects within my work. I'm often exploring subjects that I don't understand. Yeah, so okay. it would be really ignorant of me to turn down a personal project and not explore something further if I didn't fully understand it. And then through gaining that knowledge and understanding, you ultimately do become more interested in something. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't really kind of like give up or not give up on ideas. It's not like a clear cut decision. Mm. It's more kind of going through those grey zones like any writer does when you have writer's yeah. block and you're kind of pulling at strings and you go through that very depressing self-deprecating stage of like oh my god what am I going to do with my life <laughs> um and and then you know suddenly you just you become a little bit inspired by something and you kind of follow that path it. and if it leads somewhere great and if it doesn't you kind of find another way basically I'm still exploring I mean I've been doing it over a year and I'm still using about five different mediums and exploring, you know, three different ways of working. Really? So, yeah, because I think that it's important not to kind of like be so directive and limit your options. Okay. And I think that actually by working in so many different ways, there's an opportunity for me to learn new skills and possibly push my, you know, my technique and my approach and my understanding of photography in a new direction. So, oh. I don't know, I, I kind of, yeah. well, I think like, I, like the people that inspire me, like David Hockney and people like that, yeah. they're, they're kind of like, they're just, they're playing and that's what photography is, yeah. you know, it's just kind of like being creative and mm. having fun. So. But yet you have a very defined style, I think. Um, maybe it is to do, to, to do with the natural lighting that you use, but I think you, like just looking through all your images and I would very clearly know what one is yours. So mm. how is that something that you shoot with in mind then? No, do you know, happen? it's something that like people, like students often say to me, like, I'm trying to find my style yeah. and I'm trying, and it's like something that is like completely alien to me because um, I guess that like, so I, I came up with this metaphor recently that I Lay think kind of me. fits quite well. <laughs> Here we go. So I think that your style or kind of like your creative style anyway, for me, it's kind of like either my handwriting or my voice. Oh, okay. um, it's personal and it's not really something that I can control. It just comes, it just out, comes out and it's a way that I communicate. It's a way that I express myself and yeah. I can alter it and I can kind of learn new ways of speaking and yeah. learn new ways of writing. But ultimately, it's my signature yeah, and it's kind of like, like 
And, and you, you know, it's just a method. It's just a tool of communicating and just a way of expressing yourself. And I don't think that there should be limits on that either, yeah. you know. How about people, though? You know, if, if you were to just kind of sit in front of a person and it's, it's it's either a commission or a personal project to go and take their portrait, yeah. how much of them then, could, you know, changes the way that you're shooting them? Do you Hugely. Hugely. Yeah. So, like, do you listen to them? How, how does that happen? Because what I'm thinking of uh, in particular is the images that you have of the young boys and there is no inhibitions there with those boys. And normally when you go photographing adolescent men, they are so nervous and a bit gawky and they don't really want to be in front of your camera but there's none of that with your shots they are so relaxed in front of your lens that you, you see that straight away so how do you almost disarm someone and then let their character come through what's your process i don't think there's kind of like a tool or a secret trick or a way of working but i do think that like empathy and vulnerability is a huge part of my work yeah. and i think that by allowing yourself as a photographer to be the more vulnerable one you're empowering the person that you're photographing so mm -hmm. if that person person kind of feels in control or they feel particularly confident yeah. even if they don't necessarily feel that way most of the in time the, yeah. you know you're you're allowing that space and that opportunity for them to kind of collaborate with you and make that image because you can't take a portrait on your own do you know what I mean you yeah, need absolutely. that other it's, person it's but a lot of it is direction that's the thing you know I wish that I could kind of like just you know say to people do whatever you want yeah. just you know be whoever and but a lot of the time you know as a creative you're kind of like yeah but i really like that you're, light yeah, you're or the you... one with the style and you're the one with the camera so you have to so you would direct people in a certain way yeah i think there's like what i've discovered recently is going back to earlier work that i kind of have two methods of working okay. and one of them is um comes i guess from more of a documentary background where you're observing and then selecting your moments or seeing things that inspire you and then kind of going wow you know i yeah. need to grab that and then the other ones are the very, very predefined kind of images where, you know, I'll wake up in the middle of the night because I've had a dream and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I need to sketch that. And then I've, you know, I've got hundreds of notebooks under my bed just of stupid crap yeah. drawings of things that I want to do. And I'm like, right, I want this light. I want this subject. I want it in this country. I want them wearing this. Yeah. I want, do you know what I mean? And I don't really want to kind of like just take one path or the other because I think it's quite refreshing for a viewer yeah. to kind of see that. Um, in your work and you kind of like those two processes. So you amalgamate kind of, both of them yeah, and, and shoot from there. Tell me then maybe a bit about your camera and, and, and what you use. I mean, do you shoot film or do you shoot digital or, or what's your game? Yeah, well, I mean, it goes back again to um, the idea of personal work and commissions. I mean, I'm very lucky, like weirdly, um, I've grown up with film because my dad's a photographer. So I kind of spent my childhood in the dark rooms yeah. in the studios. Um, and my education, thankfully, was all on analog as well. Okay. Um, so I left with a pure passion for analog and I still have it and I'm like analog till I die. Um, but then 